Hey everybody, welcome back, Music Corner. As always, I am your host, <clears throat> Merlin! On today's rainy afternoon episode of Music Corner, we are talking about Brockhampton. Yes, the LA via Texas boy band slash rap group who just announced they are breaking up, or I guess rather they announced it as an indefinite hiatus, but most of the big music reporting outlets were beyond comfortable just calling this thing a breakup. And I understand that because Kevin Abstract in interviews and tweets has been mentioning that there's a timer on Brockhampton and that the band would expire sooner or later for years now, which also makes sense because keeping the creativity and creative ambitions of all of these different rappers and singers and producers and photographers together and singularly focused was always going to be a difficult thing to do in the long term. I also feel pretty comfortable saying that we're probably not getting another Brockhampton album, maybe ever, and if we ever do get another one, I think it will be quite a long time from now once a lot of these guys have sort of burnt out on their solo careers or whatever other avenues and ventures they pursue. So that's why I'm comfortable taking a look at the seven full-length projects that these guys assembled while they were together as a group, putting them in order, ranking them, talking about them in a video just like this. Now, Brockhampton is a pretty interesting group because they have a very derisive fan base, people who love and adore and were around for their original Saturation trilogy generally don't like the next three records that they put out. I think a lot of people who were around in the early days resent the band for kicking Amir Van out after his sexual assault and sexual misconduct allegations, and as a result, just don't vibe with the more emotional tone that they take as they drift away from hip hop and into other genres on later records. And for people who are coming at the band a little bit later on and are maybe more fans of pop rap, pop music, indie and indie pop type music. They're not as into the hip hop stuff of the early days. They're not as into the saturation albums as the people who were listening to them right as they were released. So as somebody that has dished out quite a bit of acclaim for this band throughout their entire career, I feel pretty comfortable taking on this whole discography as objectively as I can, based both on these records when I initially reviewed them and how I feel about them now, and ranking them 7 to 1 now that it is a complete collection of Brockhampton, the band, the group, as a holistic statement. And that means that we are starting with number seven. Yes, in my opinion, the worst Brockhampton project is the first Brockhampton project, 2016's All American Trash. This is almost certainly the record that the least people watching this video have heard, whether you're a fan of the early stuff or a fan of the later stuff. Most people's journey through Brockhampton's commercial discography doesn't go back this far, and there's a pretty good reason for that. This is the only album I didn't listen to right as it was released from the band. I was aware of Kevin Abstract at the time, and a lot of people in the hip-hop underground were talking about his American boyfriend, mixtape slash album and I'm not really sure how this thing slipped by me. My best guess is just that it wasn't really impressing that many people and I would say it still doesn't impress that many people. This thing isn't terrible and there are some ideas that feed into what made the saturation era so great for the band that show up on this record but it's clear that the thesis statement of the rap group Brockhampton is still very much under construction at this point in their career. They don't really have a whole ton of direction, focus, or understanding of what bringing all of this talent together was going to do for them and how to best utilize it. And the results are a record that has some highlights, but even those highlights don't really hold a candle to most of the rest of what Brockhampton would go on to do. Number six. My ghost still haunt ya. My life is I Tanya, a big eye monster. Only f Yes, number six is this little guy I hold in my hand. Uh, 2018's Iridescence, Brockhampton's fourth album and fifth 
overall project. This record comes after a strange period of turmoil and resets for the band repeatedly across 2018. Early on in the year, they announced that they have signed to RCA Records on the back of how successful the Saturation Trilogy was. And a couple of different musical uh, announcements, cancellations, eras are going on around this time for the band. This is of course when Amir Van is famously kicked out of the group for his sexual assault allegations and what we would later on learn was the setup of a robbery that involved Dom. He spits a verse about it on a song on Ginger that is really, really memorable. And as a result of this turmoil, they scrap a lot of what they're working on and then we get the radio shows where they debuted the three 1999, 98, 97 tracks, which didn't end up landing on any of their records, though. They were a pretty good group, and I still recommend them. And that finally leads us to Iridescence, which has many of the follies of a commercial label debut, just like a lot of other bands do. It's clear that they are trying to deliver what they think people want, and they may not be in the right state of mind or have the time to focus, deliver, and execute what they really needed to do. Iridescence has some great moments on it. Tanya is still, to this day, one of my favorite Brockhampton songs ever. I really enjoy Honey, too. There are a handful of bangers here that work, but it is clear that the record is born of conflicted priorities. I think when you look at the band's entire catalog, this stands out as the least impactful of their studio album. It's certainly the least discussed online, the least well remembered the least fanfare and i think all of that comes from a combination of just inconsistent songwriting and imagery and thematic focus across the record which makes it suffer even though it does have some pretty good tracks number five Yes, almost certainly the biggest point of controversy and contention in this video, Saturation 3. Now I just talked about Saturation 3 in my last video about records I was wrong about when I initially reviewed them, and this thing came on the back of an enormous hype train after how good Saturation 1 and 2 were. Right at the end of 2017, they were completing the trilogy that they promised, and to this point, they had dominated a year with one great single after another in two spectacular albums. And I'll be the first person to admit that Everything that was going on made me a lot kinder to Saturation 3 then than I really should have been. Understanding that it fit the format that worked so well for the other two records made me really see it as something that was conceptually perfected, but this record is just not up to par with the rest of their discography. And that's really a shame because some huge highlights come on here. The track Bleach is kind of responsible for the entire Brockhampton phenomenon. It was the start of their crossover success into the mainstream and into the young indie scene that they are now so deeply ingrained in. The lead single Boogie is still a fan favorite and one of the craziest, most hard-hitting tracks they released in their entire career, and the compositionally dynamic Sister Nation is still one of the most genuinely impressive singular statements of the band's entire discography. But looking past these tracks, it is just slim pickings on Saturation 3, and I can certainly pick out a beat here and there, or one verse, or maybe a hook that I think is really great and holds up to the rest of the Saturation trilogy, but they're a little bit few and far between because this album really is throwing the works at you, and it doesn't all go over very well. In fact, I don't even think I can say most of it goes over very well. And given that it's propelled by some incredible highlights, which all of the records we're gonna talk about from here on out are, and it doesn't have the deep cuts, it was really easy for me to place this thing where I did on the list. Number four. Don't shoot up the party, don't shoot up the party. 
Rockhampton's fourth best album is their most recent album, Roadrunner, New Light, New Machine. This thing is not even a full year old yet, but I feel pretty confident in its placement on the list here. While I think it avoids any major, major flaws like the first two albums we've talked about, it's also clearly a step down from the band's best, most influential and well-remembered material, which we're going to talk about later on in the list. Not to start this thing off on a bad note, though, because I really do enjoy this album. It is a return to hip-hop after the band took an emotional break on their previous album. Almost all of the songs here are predominantly rap-driven, and the band allows themselves to collaborate with some really interesting features. Of course, the lead single to this thing, Buzz Cut with Danny Brown, one of the most zany and futuristic rap songs of last year. I'm also a huge fan of Dom McLennan and JPEG Mafia going head to head on the track Chain On. But even beyond these moments, the band presents some incredible songs like the socially conscious club banger Don't Shoot Up the Party, a song that I spent all of last year not being able to get enough of, and of course, fan favorites The Light and The Light Part 2, which see Joba getting emotional in a way that is very, very different from how they were relieving themselves emotionally on their previous album. It's extremely intense, almost harrowing, and just a really fascinating moment. And while yes, there are definitely some songs on this record that fall flat on their face, most notably the extremely hyped up ASAP Ferg and Rocky collab, which might be one of their worst songs on any of these albums, for the most part, this is a consistent, dynamic, versatile, and very fun listen, and one that I don't see myself souring on anytime soon. I think this is pretty firmly among the high-tier Brockhampton albums. Number three. Spending all my nights alone, waiting for you to call me. You're the only one. At number three, and I genuinely can't even believe I'm saying this, is Ginger. And the reason I can't believe I'm saying this is that I went out of my way to just dump a claim onto this record when it first came out. I was really, really impressed by it. I had given sort of a middling review to Iridescence, and when the band was getting a lot of new fans around that time, a lot of people came at me for not liking that album as much as they did, but I was so impressed when Ginger came out that the band had formally and fully made that transition beyond the hip-hop sound of their origin. This thing is a truly emotionally compelling blend of pop, indie, R&B, and of course, hip-hop. And that's even given that the first two singles from this record are not among my favorite singles the band has ever released. I'm still not crazy about either of those tracks, but it was like every single other thing that I heard from this record and then the entire track list of this record aside from those two songs is just great. It is such an emotional catharsis for these Brockhampton guys, and that relief is translated into the entire record. When you listen to it as a whole, there are so many moments of genuine and compelling emotion. Occasionally it comes in the form of something very sweet and very sincere, and occasionally it comes in the moment of something very dark and very troubled and often brutally, brutally honest. I think you could make a really compelling case that the track Dearly Departed is the singular best thing Brockhampton ever did in their entire discography. The verse that Dom spits on the back half of this song confronting and addressing the departure of Amir head on is one of the most amazing things I've ever heard as a music reviewer. So yeah, this album is great. I highly, highly recommend it. If you are the type of person who really only likes hip-hop and this album didn't translate to you when it first came out, 
revisit it once you've gone in and digested some other genres and maybe some other stuff that influenced this. And I think you'll see what makes it so unique, what makes it so fantastic, and why so many fans have this feverish dedication to it, because it really is a wonderful, wonderful listen. And the fact that it is only the bronze in this list is a testament to just how insanely creative and innovative these guys were in their early days. Number two. Keep a gun chain on my neck, fly as a jet. Boy, better treat me with respect. Keep a gun chain. Yep, runner up, saturation. Um, it feels like yesterday, the now four and a half years ago that I reviewed this album, I gave it an extremely high review and a ton of praise off of the back of the immense hype that the band had been generating by releasing singles week after week. Hearing Star and gold and heat and milk in the lead up to this project, it just seemed like the band could do no wrong. And not only were they delivering these creative and compelling and extremely unique renditions of internet hip hop, they were doing it with such a versatile flair to it. All of these songs sound so different, but they all impress just the same. This record sort of set a format and a formula for the entire saturation trio, where the bangers are placed, where the bare face ballads are delivered, where the interludes are cut into the tracks, and while it isn't the most solid, perfect track list, it is so extraordinarily impressive. This is another record that I would say is more compelled by high points than consistency across its entire track list. And there really aren't any bad, bad songs on here, but when you kick the whole thing off with heat, there is just some stuff that's gonna fall by the wayside. And if you can bear to listen to Amir's violent and sexually charged opening verse on heat, given what we know about him in retrospect, uh, this is still probably the hardest banger that the band has ever produced. And yet I'm not even sure it's a top two or three song on this record. The track that I personally called my favorite Brockhampton song for years leading up to Dearly Departed lands on this album. It is gold, the best single the band has ever released, and still a track that is so ridiculously smooth, infectious, and catchy, it feels impossible that it could even exist this way. And yet with all of the praise that I have been lumping onto Saturation for its formula, its versatility, and its high execution, it's not even the best rendition of this exact formula. Number one. In the heat of the summer, you're so different from the Of course, of course, of course, the best album in the Brockhampton catalog is the unbelievable Saturation 2. I gave this record a 10 out of 10 review when it came out back in 2017 because I had felt so strongly about how good Saturation 1 was. And Saturation 2 is better. This thing is awesome. It kicks so much ass. It is so consistently good. It takes the formula that Saturation 1 delivered and builds on it in every way. Every single facet of it is better. The bangers, like opening track Gummy, are even hookier, even catchier, and hit even harder. The band expands their array of influences in the way that they tackle subject matter on songs like Junkie and Tokyo. And to this day, one of my favorite things in the band's entire discography is Bare Face's heartfelt finale to this record, Summer, a song whose hook is still ingrained into the heads of people who were around digesting all of this music back in 2017. So yeah, when you have an album that is this perfect, an album that is this easy to praise, an album so versatile and so consistent and so fantastic. It really is the kind of statement that most bands can only make once. It is the definitive piece of Brockhampton material, even though it doesn't contain anywhere near all of the sounds and styles they would go on to experiment with. 
everything that you need to know about why people love this band, why people consider these guys to be so talented at all of the various things they do. It's present within the track list of Saturation 2, still one of the better albums of 2017, still one of the premier rap albums of the entire 2010s, and still such a fun and engaging experience that I just can't get enough of it. There are still times to this day that I just want to sit down and listen to Saturation 2. So that's it. Rest in peace to Mr. Brock, to, to Mr. Hampton. Um, though I, I don't suppose that these guys are going to be going anywhere. I suspect that we'll hear from them uh, some way or another through solo material or collaborations. Kevin Abstract was already on that, that pretty good new K-Tempest song that came out last week. So... So I'm sure I'll be talking about the individual members of Brockhampton more in the future, and if this really is it for the band collectively, they delivered one of the more interesting discographies in all of modern hip-hop, and if you've never given them a chance because of the stigma around their fans who can be kind of annoying, I trust me, I know, or the meltdown that a bunch of hip-hop bros had when they kicked out a dude who sexually assaulted people. Uh, forget all the noise and just listen to the music because uh, it really is worth it from a hip-hop standpoint and just generally from a music standpoint because these guys blend genres really well and really efficiently. So I didn't plan this video because I obviously didn't know that the band was about to be breaking up. Still considering returning with an episode of Spotlight, but um, if that doesn't happen, it'll probably be the update next towards the end of February, which is going to be dense as shit because there is so much like really good and really interesting music coming out like it's january this is supposed to be like a downtime and over the next month i have like 60 albums on my calendar so there's going to be a lot to talk about when we get to the end of february for the update and uh if that is the next time that i see you guys then uh s stay gold i guess